Good evening, everybody, and welcome to our chapel service this week here at Mansfield College. Tonight, we're going to be reflecting on the theme of finding sanctuary in God and asking what that means for us in our lives. So we can now move to our opening prayer. Almighty God, grant us a quiet night and peace at last. Amen. By day, O oh God, you grant your steadfast love. And at night, your song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. Hear my cry, O God, listen to my prayer. From the end of the earth I call to you when my heart is faint. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I, for you are my refuge, a strong tower against the enemy. Let me abide in your tent forever, find refuge under the shelter of your wings. For you, O God, have heard my vows. You have given me the heritage of those who fear your name. Prolong the life of the king, many years, Many his years endure to all generations. May he be throned forever before God, appoint steadfast love and faithfulness to watch over him. So I will always sing praises to your name as I pay my vows day after day.
The reading is taken from John, chapter 16, verses 16 to 24. Jesus went on to say, In a little while you will see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me. At this, some of his disciples said to one another, What does he mean by saying, In a little while you will see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me, and because I am going to the Father. They kept asking, What does he mean by a little while? We don't understand what he is saying. Jesus saw that they wanted to ask him about this, so he said to them, Are you asking one another what I meant when I said, In a little while you will see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me? Very truly I tell you, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will turn to joy. A woman giving birth to a child has pain because her time has come. But when her baby is born, she forgets the anguish because of her joy that a child is born into the world. So with you, now is your time of grief, but I will see you again and you will rejoice, and no one will take away your joy. In that day, you will no longer ask me anything. Very truly, I tell you, my father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Until now, you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask and you will receive, and your joy will be complete. This is the word of the Lord. I pray I may speak in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In today's reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 16, we hear Jesus talking to his disciples about the future. A little while and you will no longer see me, and again a little while and you will see me. After hearing this, they are confused, saying, what does he mean? In response, we see Christ's endless compassion and understanding. He knew that they wanted to ask him, and as he cares so much about his disciples, calling them and us today his friends, in the previous chapter that he explains. Admittedly, his answer doesn't make much sense, and I wonder if the disciples were not more confused after hearing Jesus' explanation. Yet we can see when looking back that he is referring to his soon-to-be death and resurrection. He was gone and then returned, triumphing over the grave, causing their grief for their lost friend to turn into rejoicing at his glorious resurrection. In the same way, the promise of God's eternal love and the Spirit's constant presence are able to help us overcome pain and anguish in our own lives. Of course, this doesn't mean that our lives will be spent blissfully rejoicing. In fact, this passage guarantees weeping and mourning. Yet Christ promises to be with us in whatever we are facing, whatever our circumstances, and whoever we are. And as he is the one that conquered death, nothing can prevent our finding sanctuary in him. Whilst true joy, being at one with God, may be incomplete this side of death, God can remain our refuge. As the psalmist writes, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Let me find refuge under the shelter of your wings. God can be our place of safety, as God knows and understands us in every way. Jesus knows what it is to be human, to struggle, be hungry, tired, joyful, in pain, and he encourages us to come to him, to ask anything of the Father. We are encouraged to come to God and to find rest. God doesn't begrudgingly grant us love after much beseeching. God is always there, wanting to be there for us, and delighting when we accept this sanctuary. God is the only one who can be always there for us and will never let us down. Jesus doesn't fully explain what will happen when the disciples are confused, even though he could, being aware of his imminent death. Instead, he is focused upon the response of the disciples. There is not one moment where God's love isn't focused upon us. Now, this might all sound quite contradictory to the reading we just heard. You will no longer see me. How can Jesus be always there for us if he left his disciples? Well, as we heard last week, Christ's ascension enabled the Spirit to be present among us, always there, at all times. And Jesus' death, the moment when he left his disciples, is the moment when he is most fully present in human suffering, able to understand all our troubles and difficulties, no matter what they are. Despite Jesus' presence and identification in our struggles, he also promises joy in all its abundance. The phrase joy is mentioned five times in this short passage, 
which is clearly emphasized. God desires that we experience joy and promises that pain will turn to joy. This passage is full of promises. For example, I will see you again and no one will take your joy from you. Introduced by very truly, I tell you. Jesus' promises can be relied upon as he is the truth. The phrasing of the initial promise, pain will turn to joy, is particularly interesting. Sorrow is not replaced by joy, but turned into joy. There is the possibility of something wonderful being created out of our struggles. The joy is not unrelated, as the woman giving birth receives the wonder of a baby out of her pain. This is not to say that God desires our suffering in order to create good fruit, but rather that out of the pain of our conflict-torn and broken world, God can and will transform it for good. This wondrous joy always has the last word. Christ offers this joy to us in himself and encourages us to come to him and find rest, shelter and sanctuary. Amen. to bring peace. May they find refuge and strength in you. Lord, we pray for our college community here at Mansfield. Grant unto each and every member your love and compassion. Help us to be advocates for your love through our daily lives so that we may all come to know you more deeply and experience your peace. Lord, we pray for ourselves. Help us to come to know your calming presence in our own lives and to look inwardly at our personal faith so that we can find sanctuary in you. We now join together to pray the Lord's Prayer, each in a language of our own choosing. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you to everyone who took part in tonight's service. Thank you very much to Lizzie for preaching. Thank you to Harry for leading us and helping put this all together. Thank you to Vincent for leading the psalm, Flora for leading the prayers, Tom for leading the reading, and Layla for giving us the wonderful music for reflection. And thank you as well to Annabelle playing the organ, to the choir leading us in psalm, and to Joseph leading our choir. We hope to see you next week. Uh, we have a special guest preacher, Reverend Arlington Trotman, and we will be celebrating Pentecost, but we will also be marking the one year anniversary of the killing of George Floyd. So a time to mark the brokenness in our world while also marking the coming of the Holy Spirit. So in that, I will leave the final words to Harry. 
Heavenly Father, we rejoice in your strength and thank you for being an ever-present ref present refuge in times of need. We pray you will bring your message of eternal joy into our hearts and ask, as you send us out from this place, that you will bless us and keep us as we continue in our journey to draw closer to you. Amen. <laughs>